I don't have to worry about starving. Instead, I can just eat more fat, eat delicious beef, and have all of that and more. And when I say more, I mean I can have bigger boobs too. So do I notice my boob size bigger? Yes, absolutely. Hello carnivores, it's me Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. Hope you all are staying meat fueled and fat fueled. And of course, I hope you all are having a beautiful day. So today I'm going to be doing a Q&A that rhymed. <laughs> yes. And um, a couple days ago, I asked you all for your burning desires, your questions, your concerns, your worries, what is stressing you out or what is making you happy. And I'll just be addressing everything that you guys have inputted here on my phone, on my Instagram. I have not looked at any of them, so I'll just be reacting, answering organically and spontaneously. So let's just get right started. Let's just get right into it, is what I meant. I guess you could also say, let's get right started. Maybe not, that sounds weird. Okay, let's just get started. <laughs> First one is by Michelle444 underscore four. Do you eat chicken or turkey? If not, why? Do you weigh yourself? Love your channel. Thank you, Michelle. So firstly, you ask if I eat chicken or turkey. That is a great question. And that's something that I should talk more about, actually. But I guess I just assume that you guys know that I have eczema and psoriasis. Um, the psoriasis is something that has pretty much been conquered fully. It has never came up again, never flared up ever since I stopped eating the vegan diet. But the eczema still does flare up once in a while depending on what I add into the carnivore diet. So that means whenever I add chicken, um, I must say I have not tried turkey, but whenever I eat chicken, my eczema flares up and I start itching again. So pretty much the answer to that question, I just don't want my eczema to flare up at all whatsoever, not even a single itch because life is just better without itching. <laughs> and so that's why I avoid chicken. But also on top of that, I do find chicken not very satiating for me. I'm just a gal who loves fatty cuts of meat. Um, so beef just happens to be the fattiest cut that I can find and enjoy easily. Um, and chicken is just not fatty enough for me. Even the fattiest parts of a chicken, um, it's just still a little too lean and dry. Uh, the times that I have eaten chicken, besides the eczema flaring up, which is not great, I find that I get hungry very quickly after eating the chicken. Um, I think it's also because, okay, I just wanna make sure I'm not flashing you guys. I think it's also because it's a white meat. Maybe the nutrients in that meat is not as nutrient dense as beef or any type of red meat actually. Um, so besides the fat, it's also the nutrients and I find chicken just doesn't really satiate nearly as much as beef. Now turkey, I just assume is the same case. I just assume that turkey, you know, also a white meat, also quite lean. I'm not gonna feel great. I'm not gonna love the taste as much either. But with that being said, if you love the taste of chicken, if you love incorporating it into your carnivore meals, I see a lot of people in the carnivore community incorporate chicken in really creative meals. Like I see uh, carnivore bread or waffles uh, that need chicken. Well, if it doesn't cause any reactions or issues, definitely eat chicken. I personally just don't want to flare up my eczema, uh, so that's why I don't eat chicken. Do I weigh myself? So I don't weigh myself. I actually don't own a scale. There is no scale in this apartment. So even if I wanted to, I can't because I don't have a scale. So to answer that question, I do not weigh myself. I don't want to, I have no desire to, and I don't care to. Christina and up, how to manage histamine tolerance with carnivore. So I've done some research regarding histamines because I definitely wanted to find out what may possibly be causing my eczema. And it's true that there is just more histamines in aged meats, in aged foods in general. So that sadly includes cheeses, includes uh, aged meats like prosciutto, salami, anything that has been aged, even aged steaks may be causing um, histamine intolerance. So you want to really try to eat all of your food as fresh as possible. And I have noticed that even when it's frozen, 
it's fine. But as long as it's properly stored, properly frozen, you don't want your meats or your foods to be sitting on the counter or in room temperature for long periods of time and then freezing it, thinking that it'll preserve its freshness. You want to freeze it when it's fresh, or you want to keep it in the fridge when it's fresh. You don't want your meat sitting out for long periods of time before eating it because that will cause the histamines to build up and uh, to exponentially increase. So besides aged foods, you definitely may want to also avoid meats that are higher in omega-6. So definitely pork chicken again so those types of meats are probably not going to be very low in histamines um, instead i really suggest you opt for red meats like beef and lamb also you don't want to eat foods or meats that are too too processed for example like beef jerky or even things like ground beef depends on how sensitive you are to histamines but I just find that fresh cuts of whole steaks, whole cuts of meat, especially beef that are fresh, good quality, grass-fed, grass-finished, will generally not cause any issues with histamine intolerance. Now, eggs are a whole nother issue. You may be very sensitive to eggs, but what you can also do is to experiment with pasture-raised and soy-free, but it's very hard to find pasture-raised eggs that are soy-free, but I do know that sometimes the minimal amounts of soy in eggs could be causing histamine intolerance. So it just depends on the person, just how sensitive they are to histamines, but it may actually take a diet, an elimination style diet of just beef, salt, and water to really pinpoint what is causing your issues and your histamine intolerances. Do you drink alcohol? Asked by Missy G. Malone. I, the last time I had alcohol was probably senior year of high school. That was my first time having alcohol and also my last um, because, you know, there's this whole perception of drinking alcohol as a perfect way to have a good time, you know, to enjoy socializing, to party hard and to, you know, have a fun time with your friends or with your colleagues. And so last year of high school, I was so curious how I would feel with alcohol. And I remember drinking a couple shots of vodka and maybe a beer or two. And um, I just felt horrible like so bad i had the worst headache the next morning and my whole body just started aching i may be allergic to alcohol um, but luckily i did not have asian glow if you know what asian glow comment down below <laughs> if you're asian you should probably know but a lot of asians kind of experience asian glow which is what i see as alcohol poisoning or kind of an allergic reaction to alcohol we would usually turn bright red or tomato red or just very flushed in our face, on our chest, or just even our whole body whenever we consume alcohol. It's very common among uh, Asians. And luckily, I didn't experience alcohol um, Asian glow at all. I didn't get red. I didn't feel anything besides the headache the next day. And also when I did drink the alcohol the moment of, I didn't really feel like it was a great time. I just started feeling dizzy and I didn't really get what all the hype was about with drinking alcohol. Plus the taste to me at least was disgusting. I just can't understand why people would enjoy drinking hard liquor or hard alcohol or like beer. Yes, beer tastes a little better, but it's still not that great. Um, I also have tried wine. My dad is a huge wine connoisseur and he would always push me to try these fancy wines and really nice wines and whenever I drink it, I just think it tastes disgusting. So maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm still young and I can't appreciate the fine dining experience, but I don't like alcohol. I just don't like the taste and I don't like how I feel. So don't drink it. Supergirl 10 asks, how do you keep on the carnivore diet? I keep falling off the wagon. So I personally can put down a lot of food. So I think that is a blessing, like a really good blessing, especially on the carnivore diet, because I do feel like on the carnivore diet, being able to eat enough is very important. 
if you want to stay on track, if you want to stay committed. It is also easy to under eat on the carnivore diet because it is such a nutrient dense, such a protein and fat heavy way of eating. I mean, you're cutting out all the carbs and you're just focusing on some of the most heavy types of foods, beef, uh, butter, eggs, just pure fat, uh, pure protein and muscle meats. So you will naturally at the beginning feel like you're eating a whole heavy rock and you might feel nauseous, you might feel you know, gross or bloated or this or that when you're adapting. Um, but I think you really need to get over that hump by making sure you eat enough. Um, if you just don't feel hungry, then fine. But the moment you do feel hungry, you must eat. Otherwise your body is just inevitably gonna start craving bad junk like sugar, like ice cream, like chips, you know, all those types of foods that are going to be very detrimental to your health long term, you're going to crave that if you don't eat enough. Now, the next level to that is eating enough fat. Yes, you can eat all the lean meats as you want, but your body is not going to truly feel satiated if you're not eating enough fat. So this is why I really like to prioritize eating much more fat. What are the easiest ways of eating fat? butter sticks. Frozen butter sticks is my absolute favorite. Um, I love freezing butter sticks, taking it out when I'm hungry. And when I first went carnivore, actually my first few months, I remember I was at school at Juilliard, going to class, going to practice, going to sessions, um, rehearsals, and I would be packing sticks of butter in my bag, in my backpack, bringing it to school. And to prevent it from melting, I would pack it with an ice pack. So that's how far I would go to make sure I'm fat fueled. I think being fat fueled is so important, not just meat fueled, but also fat fueled. You need that fat to power your brain, uh, to power your energy and your productivity. You need that fat to prevent falling off the wagon. And I think that's the biggest <laughs> tactic is to eat enough and to eat enough fat. SDXD16F asks, did you ever have bad menstrual cramps before going carny or cysts? So before I went carnivore, I had some of the worst, worst menstrual cramps ever. And I can argue ever in the history of women's menstrual cramps, they were so painful, like so, so excruciatingly painful. And I thought it was normal. I thought women just had to deal with the pain of having cramps during the period, you know, and I didn't realize that this is something even remotely related to diet. I thought that I was doing my body a huge favor by eating the vegan diet and I thought that by eating the vegan diet I was probably experiencing the best of cramp pain. But little did I know that going carnivore or eating more meat and fats would help with that pain, if not obliterate that pain completely. So when I went uh when I was vegan, some of the worst cramp pains were so bad that I couldn't even stand up. Um, if I tried to get off a chair or out of my bed, it was so difficult that I felt like I would just topple over and fall to the ground. There was a few times where I thought that I needed to call an ambulance because it was that painful. Now, what exactly caused that pain? I'm not exactly sure. Could it have been all of the fiber and the carbs and oxalates that I was consuming? It could have been, but I couldn't really pinpoint it and I didn't really have uh, the knowledge or the patience or the curiosity to find out exactly why I was having that much pain. I kind of just accepted it as something that I had to deal with. Um, but it was seriously so painful. And thinking back, um, it's truly just a whole 180 degree turn um, in how I experience my menstrual cycles now. So now I don't have any cramps and it just it's so crazy that i say that that i can say that with confidence that i don't have any menstrual cramps because it was so bad it was such a dread just knowing that my period was coming um, having the symptoms of having my period come i would just be dreading it because i would know that i would feel so fatigued so tired uh, so bloated and puffy and of course so in pain so now that i'm carnivore i got my period back after losing it for two years um, i lost it the last two years of my vegan life 
and I brought it back. I got it back easily, actually, just by eating tons of meat and butter and fats and eggs. Got it back by the first couple months of going carnivore. And when my period did come very regularly, um, it was painless. It was seriously painless. The only small amounts of pain would be in my breasts. You know, my breasts would feel swollen and heavy and very sensitive, sometimes kind of painful to the touch. Um, but besides that, no cramps. Seriously, no cramps. It is freaking amazing how I can say that. And now thinking back to my vegan years, like what a difference diet can make in pain, in menstrual cramp pain to be exact. To answer the question, I have experienced pain with periods and now I do not at all. It is amazing. Okay, Luchi Kanza asks, sorry if it's too personal, but have you noticed a difference in your breast size or the look from vegan to carnivore? Some women have noticed growth, hormones finally balanced while others haven't. I feel all the nutrients will help, but we're also losing body fat. Okay. So I might get a little personal and crude, uh, but I just wanna be as transparent and um, honest as possible. I have noticed differences in my body, my physique, um, the feminine, the femininity, is that a word? The amount of feminine, how feminine my body looks, okay. <laughs> so, from my memory, my body as a vegan, it was, you know, very skinny fat. And I was kind of like wishing that my boobs would be bigger, my waist would be cinched, my booty would be popping a little bit more. Um, and now as a carnivore, two years in, honestly, like I don't even have to go to the gym that much, even though I'm back in the gym, you know, not that regularly, but kind of, but I don't have to work my ass off to get a perky booty. And I don't have to be starving myself for a flat tummy, for a zero bloat, for a sucked in cinched waist. I don't have to worry about starving. Instead, I can just eat more fat, eat delicious beef and have all of that and more. And when I say more, I mean I can have bigger boobs too. So do I notice my boob size bigger? Yes, absolutely. I do remember when I was vegan, my bra cup size was 32B, sometimes 34 or 36A. And now as a carnivore, I am generally 32C, okay? So if that answers your question, um, Yes, my boobs got bigger and my physique definitely looks more feminine. You know, the hips are nicely shaped, you know, and I'm, I'm just happy with my body. Um, and I'm definitely most happy about not having a Buddha belly, like back when I was eating the vegan diet. Now I have zero bloat. I don't have to worry about covering up my pregnant looking belly with loose fitting clothing. I can just wear whatever I desire and feel happy and confident. Elsie Draco asks, do you think you'll ever reintroduce small amounts of vegetables to your diet, like spices? So I actually started off the carnivore diet with black pepper. So that is the one spice that I did incorporate. Black pepper and some garlic powder here and there whenever I wanted to do some fancy cooking. But it was a lot of black pepper and there were times where I poured the shit out of the black pepper thing onto my steaks. and. It just started covering up the taste of the steaks and I started feeling like it was causing a little bit of a runny nose, some allergies, some sniffles and congestion. So when I stopped the peppering, it got better. So ever since then, I just decided I don't really need black pepper. It's not that valuable um, because I do love the taste of steaks plain that I don't need to heavily rely on pepper. But let's say you really do think pepper and seasonings make a big difference in allowing you to enjoy your carnivore meals a lot more then definitely incorporate it. As long as you don't have extreme congestion or allergies or runny noses when you have these seasonings, um, if you don't, then definitely incorporate it. Nothing wrong with that. Now, do I think I'll ever reintroduce vegetables? At the moment, I don't really think so, just because I feel so great and you know my digestion is perfect. I don't believe that fiber or vegetables are necessary to go to the bathroom to get the bowels moving. Um, and I'm just very happy with how I feel, how I look, um, how I sleep with just a purely carnivore diet that I don't really see myself incorporating vegetables anytime soon. Lingle Beast asks, 
Are you ever going to get a tattoo? Interesting question. I actually have thought about it. I actually have thought about where and what I would get if I were to get a tattoo, mostly because Steak and Butter Guy recently got two tattoos.、Um, the first tattoo he ever got、um, is this beautiful sunflower tattoo with like an earth, like a globe. It's a beautiful piece of artwork, and in the globe is actually our anniversary of when we started dating. So it's super special, and I could see the whole beauty of having tattoos when you want to imprint some. Something very special or meaningful、um, to you onto your body. I think that's very beautiful, and I think it's just that idea that it's permanent and that it's just imprinted onto my skin forever. You know, I don't really want to or have anything to tattoo. At the moment, I'm not really the type of gal that will tattoo something, you know, just for design, just because it looks good on. This certain part of my body, just like as a fashion statement, that's not really my thing. So, as of now, can't really see myself getting a tattoo. You make my heart smile. Asked, what's your Christmas wish list? Ah, so my Christmas wish list is a lifetime supply of ribeyes. As much as I love Kerrygold butter and Vital Farms butter and Organic Valley butter, I feel like I could always afford that. You know, it's not too expensive. But ribeyes, if I could have a lifetime supply of ribeyes, I will be happy for life. I just will. I just love ribeyes. It makes me so happy, and I feel so good on ribeyes that, you know, if I don't have to worry about my budget and having to go find and buy ribeyes for the rest of my life, like. That would be amazing,、um, but what else is on my Christmas wish list? I just want a beautiful Christmas with my loved ones, with my baby boy Simba, with Steak and Butter Guy, with my family. Hopefully,、um, I just want to stay healthy and happy. I just want us all to have a good time. So that's pretty much my Christmas wish list,、uh, besides the ribeyes. Curly coriander. Any unexpected positive side effects of the carnivore diet? So the first thing that pops into my mind is the physique, the change in feminine physique. I feel more feminine. I feel more sexy for sure,、um, because you know some things have gotten bigger while some things have gotten smaller. <laughs> love it. And、um, besides that, I just love that I can get my period on the dot every single month. It's so effortless. It's so painless. And it is just not stressful because I know it's going to come, and it always comes. I don't have to worry about it not coming or me not being fertile for the future because I definitely want to have kids. So it's an extreme peace of mind for me.、Uh, Sansha W87, I have a sweet tooth. Is there any sweet carnivore treats?、Um, the first thing that pops to mind is glycine. I see glycine quite a lot in the carnivore community. I myself. Have never incorporated glycine. I never ordered it off of Amazon,、um, and I've never tried it. But I have heard that glycine is sourced from an animal, so it is carnivore, and it does taste sweet. So maybe you can incorporate glycine into your egg puddings to make it like a sweet dessert type of carnivore food,、um, or you can put glycine in your coffee. I'm not sure if that's a thing, but honestly, if you're craving sweets, you're probably lacking、uh, fat. So I always find whenever I eat more fat, the sweet tooth, the sweet cravings, are gone. Stephanie Joe eighty one eating beef suet raw, frozen or partially thawed.、Uh, for me, I would eat it partially thawed. I just find for beef suet, it doesn't taste as delicious as frozen butter. For suet, it's almost even more bland in taste that I kind of have to enjoy the texture. Now I know that a lot of people get turned off by the waxy, chewy, gummy texture of beef suet. And if you don't know what is beef suet, it's basically raw beef fat, beef fat trimmings.、Um, but I love it. I just love that waxy taste and the texture and the chewiness. And I love how it coats my teeth <laughs> and gives me that film. I just like it. And on top of that, it tastes very pleasant, very mild. It's like. Carnivore cotton candy, so I like it partially thawed, if not room temperature, because it's very、um, fatty and delicious that way for me. But honestly, just eat it however you want. I also know a lot of people love air frying it, so it's like this crispy, crunchy treat. Or people also like to just saute it or fry it up in a pan.、Uh, Skep asks, "What is the lip color and brand?" Okay, so I'm guessing she's asking the lip color that I、um, wore in the story. 
uh, it's basically Gucci lipstick that was actually gifted to me by my older sister uh, for Christmas a couple years ago. And the color, I will definitely type it right here because I can't recall exactly the shade, but I will definitely type it right here. It is a beautiful, very flattering, bright red color. And it definitely has a more orangey coral hue. Uh, it's not as cool toned, um, but it is beautiful. Sasha Peck, any suggestions for someone who is allergic to eggs? Okay, so if you're allergic to eggs, you first want to investigate. Is it because it is not soy free? Is it because it's not pasture raised? Is it because it's not GMO free? If it still causes a reaction for you, definitely try eating just the egg yolk. A lot of people find that eating just the egg yolk will be perfectly fine. It will not cause any negative reactions. It's usually the egg white that is the dangerous part. Um, and if you still cannot, give duck eggs a try. I hear a lot that duck eggs are particularly gentle on the digestion. It doesn't cause as many reactions. Um, so try duck eggs. And if still you cannot eat duck eggs, just try to rely on meats and seafoods. Um, hopefully you can enjoy seafoods because that actually adds a lot of variety to the carnivore diet, like fatty salmon, oysters, clams, lobster, shrimp. There's so many seafood options to choose from that I do hope that if you can't eat eggs, you can try some seafood. Oh, and while we're talking about seafood, Michelle asks another one, favorite fatty fishes? Okay, so my favorite fatty fish of all time is fatty salmon. Uh, salmon belly is my absolute favorite. Tuna belly is also amazing. Um, but besides salmon and tuna, which I prefer to eat raw, I also love black cod. It is so good. It's like a black skinned fish and it's super fatty. In Chinese, it's called xue yu. So in English, that would translate to snow fish, but I doubt that's what it's called in English. But in Chinese, it's called xue yu. Half Dave asks, Beethoven or Brahms? Beethoven, obviously, hands down, anytime, any day. Beethoven over Brahms. 